Help me out here. Um, Harry and Megan, a couple of things. So Harry and Megan win a humanitarian award from the same people on the same night who gave one to the president of Ukraine. Help me out. Even giving them the benefit of the doubt. How the hell are they the same people worthy of the same award? Well, I mean, we're going from like the sublime to the ridiculous uh, often in this job, I think. And, uh, and certainly Harry and Meghan in New York uh, last night to receive this award uh, under great funfair is, uh, is frankly extraordinary. As you just said, that uh, President Zelensky was also receiving the award, not in person, because he's obviously got more important things to do and Harry and Meghan haven't. Uh, it, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's frankly just a, a ludicrous situation. I mean, I was in Boston last week with the Prince and Princess of Wales and uh, supposed to be talking about Prince William's Earthshot Prize, this big environmental project that he's got going in there, and Harry and Meghan completely torpedoed it with this uh, big new Netflix series. So anyway, regardless of uh, the whys and wheres, we're, we're all going to be glued to it and, uh, and ready to see what sort of truth bombs they're launching this time. Now, are you going to be sitting there with the fact-checker brain on or the guy who knows a good story and goes, oh, that's a new one, haven't heard that one before? Give us an idea about how somebody who, frankly, knows it all about these people, how you're going to watch it. Well, it's definitely double-edged, isn't it? Because, uh, you know, I uh, never stand in the way of a good story and Harry and Meghan provide plenty of good stories because <laughs> whether they're actually sort of slating the royal family or bemoaning their treatment in the press, it's all pretty interesting. And that's why people are interested in them. I think that uh, I was speaking to a lot of people in the States last week and, they, um, and, and they've sort of almost turned off of them. So Harry and Meghan really do need to ramp up the ante. I mean, we're all still talking about that Oprah Winfrey interview that they did and the, the uh, their truth, as it were, that was revealed then. But again, so the people in the palace I'm speaking to are, are pretty primed and ready to defend themselves if uh, if needs be. And then if there's any further allegations of mistreatment or uh, racism within the royal family, I definitely think we'll see a robust response. So again, this this story will keep on going as long as Harry and Meghan keep talking. Well, but also, I mean, surely there is. I mean, clearly, there's only a finite amount of time they were in the family, Meghan, far less than Harry, um, which means there is a finite number of stories. Now, for 100 million bucks, you'd think that you get all the stories. You wouldn't be holding anything back. But OK, if you held a little bit back for the book, right here. Surely by January, there is literally no more stories for them to tell. Well, if there are any more stories to tell, you can bet your bottom dollar that Harry and Meghan will eke them out because uh, they have to earn a lot of money. And this is what this is all about. It's all about money, regardless of whether they say that we only know the truth. This is our version of events. Well, we've already heard that, uh, one would assume, in the Oprah Winfrey interview. Then we've got Harry's upcoming book. Now, this Netflix series, over six uh, parts, and I assume that's sort of nearly five, six hours worth of material. How on earth... Well, what on earth are they going to say? I mean, uh, we, we think we've heard it all before, but I suppose when there's a check involved with Harry and Meghan that they're, uh, that they're ready to spill the beans at a moment notice. Yeah, maybe they're going to pat it all out with uh, footage of them being handed by the press at the um, Harry Potter premiere. But just also, you mentioned it's about going to Boston. And when you're in Boston with William and Kate, we know, of course, Prince Charles, King Charles, sorry, we all do that still, don't we? We all know that, uh, that, that King Charles is trying to forge a new identity for himself as the monarch and for the royal family. William needs to step up uh, for obvious reasons. And I get the distraction factor that exists about Harry and Meghan. They'll always choose the selfish thing here. But how is the royal household responding? Because they're, they're losing the front page game, frankly, uh, at the moment. And as a person who understands how the palace works... How will they respond? How can they possibly up the ante in the attention-seeking game that, uh, that obviously the other two are involved in? Well, I think we've seen the old adage that were long the hell's mantra of the Queen, never, never complain, never explain, has gone out the window. I mean, it, it already had done when she released a statement last year after that Oprah Winfrey interview. We all remember that immortal line of recollections may vary. And definitely the people I've spoken to at the Palace, uh, both at Buckingham Palace and Kensington Palace, not only will they be watching this all together in some sort of war room, um, there will be a robust response if they feel backed into a corner. Now, of course, the king, as you said, is trying to cement his own legacy rather 
rather quickly and rather early because he's uh, he realises that he won't have uh, nowhere near as much uh, time as his as his mother's uh, mother's reign, and uh, they do feel attacked. I mean, Harry and Meghan have have had it all their own way up to now. So I think if there are unjust allegations, if they do uh, come in under the line of fire, saying that there were briefing stories against Harry and Meghan just uh, you know just to be awkward, then uh, then definitely I think we'll, we'll see a response. And uh, and again that only prolongs the pain for both sides, doesn't it? But, uh, you know, it, it keeps us all talking about it. Yeah, bloody hell. All right, last one here. Um, the king has been egged or an attempted egging yet again. Now, I get it. Some people don't like him. But why has this happened a couple of times in a year? And why eggs? <laughs> I'm not too sure why the, uh, <laughs> the, the, the grocery item of choice has been made. But... I think it's quite worrying because you would have never have seen this, um, you know, in the in the Queen's era. We certainly haven't seen it with William and Kate. I mean, there were protests when I was in the Caribbean with William and Kate, and that's definitely something I think they've got to contend with when they're going to go out into these uh, Commonwealth nations that might be up for choosing their own future. But uh, you know, it, it is a bit worrying. But uh, thankfully, just eggs and, uh, and and nothing else. Maybe what next? Flour, I suppose. Yeah, bloody oath. All right. Well, thankfully, that is uh, the worst of the security.